Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We continue to remain on work from home here as far as the CNB team is concerned. I know some of you are slowly getting back to work, getting back to life as it always was. And then for many of you, the lockdown continues. So either way, don't stress. We've got a great stress buster for you coming your way. It is an absolutely fresh review, one that I secretly saved just to coincide with the India debut of this car. Yes, I drove it a few months ago, but it's being served up fresh to you right now. It sits as the pinnacle of BMW's M division. This is my review of the all new BMW M8 competition. Right through 2019 and even the start of 2020 has been busy for BMW. Swift new model introductions and some great updates. BMW has been on a roll, really. The new 6 Series GT, new X3, new generation X5, the new X7, the new generation 3 Series, updated X1 and updated 7 Series, the new X6, the X5 and X6M, and a whole new 8 series model line. Yes, it's been non-stop from Bayerisch Motor Amber. And luckily, most of that has come to India or will be here soon. And so now it's time for the big one. The BMW M8. We have already brought you our reviews of the 8 series convertible. A first look and then the road test of the 840i Grand Coupe. And so as BMW gets ready to introduce the 8 series family to India, we also have for you the range topper, the potent, powerful and near perfect M8. The brand new first ever M8 and lucky for me that I also get a chance to drive the convertible and luckier still because this isn't just the M8, it's the M8 competition. So the strongest ever M engine for any series production car. Output 612 bhp. Let that figure sink in while I get ready to jump in and drive. The car is hot, no, super hot. It looks the part of a menacingly powerful yet swanky ride, doesn't it? The convertible and the coupe are very similar to the regular 8 series counterparts in terms of how they look. But being the M version, it gets more dramatic, flared out and sportier styling. The proportions somehow work better on the convertible, but then we've been through this bit before with the non-M 8 Series. Now in India, we're going to get the 8 Series. The first member of that family will of course be the Grand Coupe, but at the pinnacle of this family sits this car, the M8, no doubt about it. The bad news, it's not going to be the convertible, it will only be the Coupe. Okay, so let's look closer at the numbers, shall we? The most powerful series production M engine has all that power and the competition model gives you 25 horses over the M8's engine. The peak torque remains the same at 750 Nm across a wide enough band. I am in Portugal's Algarve region to drive this beast as it's also where I came and drove the 8 Series Convertible and the 8 Series Grand Coupe. 
both in the M840i spec. But now, on to the real deal. The M8 competition comes with an adaptive M suspension with variable damping. The MX drive gives you default all-wheel drive, but like in the M5, you can turn the electronic stability control off and get into drift mode. That lets you have rear wheel action, but not really the thing for public roads, mind you. The car is mechanically similar in many ways to the M5 competition, but sits much lower and that adds to the car's dynamics which then belie its length and weight. It corners beautifully and its road manners are impeccable as is the acceleration and the response from the 4.4 V8. Now the regular version of the M8 if you want to call it that has an output of 588 bhp. This one being the competition is of course a lot stronger and uh, it does still use the same gearbox uh, of course which has been given the special M treatment. It's an 8-speed automatic. Inside you get the latest from BMW, everything from the new materials and color palettes to the new iDrive, virtual clusters, head-up display, a ton of standard safety equipment, some M-specific displays and buttons and radar-based semi-autonomous features. But to really test most of that, it just made sense to head off the open road and navigate to the track. So it's back to the Portimao circuit, which is brilliant as I recall. For the track, it's a quick switch to the M8 Competition Coupe. Same car but slight weight difference, it is 25 kgs lighter, has a carbon fiber roof but the tech specs are identical. It does manage 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.2 seconds while the M8 competition convertible will do it in 3.3 seconds. A lot has happened on this car as compared to the M6 in terms of the number of electronics on board and uh, there's a fair amount that the car can do for you and a lot of that has been customized to be focused on track driving mode so it's kind of apt because with the competition model you really do want to spend time on the track i'm all set on the track the M8 comes to life. And how? You have a shorter wheelbase than on the M5. So even though it's uh, similar sort of performance numbers, the dynamics are completely different. And you can pick up on that straight away. The car is completely born for the track. It's very agile. But for me, the big takeaway is the steering. It is so sharp, so precise. And... Uh, really reassuring too when it comes to some of the high pressure dynamic situations and then of course you know that the electronics are making you look smarter than you really are. The great thing about the Portimao circuit is that it's a really fast track and it's got some very tight corners so you get a good chance to be able to not only see how the powertrain reacts to that or the gearbox but even the steering. And of course, the car's M differential. All of those forces kick into play because uh, there's so many customizable settings and you can actually go ahead and customize that using the M1 and M2 buttons here on the steering wheel. Uh, they've already done that for us. And so M1 is where the car really keeps a lot of its control and M2, in this case, is where uh, some of that control has been given to you and of course, uh, traction is off. So. Uh, the good thing is we've had a chance to play around with both. And 
yes, the car is completely on point. The car's performance is brutal and yet there's a certain finesse to it. It is so well engineered that it doesn't have a bratty character at all. There's a refinement and elegance to it all, even as you push the car to tire shredding limits. Full marks of the chassis engineering team, the stiffness and agility you get from this car because of its structure is remarkable. BMW has brought the 8 Series to India as yet another flagship alongside the 7 Series sedan and the X7 SUV. The X5M will likely be here sometime this year or early 2021 as well. The 840i Grand Coupe is likely to be the most attractive of the family for the backseat buyers here in India. But the M8 does enough to make a Porsche, Aston Martin, Mercedes AMG or even Ferrari V8 buyer think twice. So the M8 competition, coupe and convertible that you saw there aren't quite what has been launched in India. What we get is the regular M8. So that's just 25 horses lesser. But in terms of drive dynamics and a lot of the equipment, of course, it's the same car. And like I said, you don't get the convertible here in India. Given how the temperature is already rising, none of that comes as a surprise. Let's take a short break here on CNB. We come back with more from the 8 Series family. Welcome back to CNB. Now let's talk about the other family member from the 8 Series. Now the 8 Series is a new family line from BMW and there are different variants of this car. What's interesting is that all the body styles come in the M8 Avatar as well. But what we are getting is the 8 Series Grand Coupe. It's a petrol only model. We get the 840i and there are two variants but uh, once again a primer for you on what this car is all about. So it's back to Portugal to bring you the review of our 8 Series Grand Coupe test drive. The BMW 8 Series family is brand new. It is part of the rejig in the company's model line which saw the 6 Series being replaced in a sense by the new 8 Series. So what you get are the 8 Series Coupe, Convertible, Grand Coupe and then each of those in their potent Avtar badged M8 that has just broken cover. While the 8 Series Grand Coupe was revealed just in mid-June. And we reviewed the 8 Series Convertible in April. At the time I told you that India will not get the Coupe or Convertible but instead will get the Grand Coupe. This now stands as confirmed and so expect the car to come to us in 2020. It will arrive as this, the BMW 840i S-Drive Grand Coupe and that's the test car with me. Yes, it's one of those rare times that I'm actually liking a car in white. I have to say the uh, frozen brilliant white on this, which is like a nice matte color. It really looks nice. It suits the car. It's uh, nice and elegant and yet it gives you the sense of sportiness because it complements the black wheels, the black grille up front and a few of the black elements all around really nicely. Now, elegance, yes, is important, but inherent sporty character becomes even more important because let's not forget that this is a sports car. It's not trying to be a sedan. If you want a sedan in this class, you should buy the 7 Series and this isn't that car. So in terms of styling, of course, the elements are very similar to the uh, 8 Series Coupe and Convertible, but the roof sits a little bit taller. It's also a lot more stretched back and it gives you a really fast dynamic in terms of styling. Of course, the door has been added in and so you get a lot of that length in here, which is visible 
buyers in India will like that kind of thing. Good amount of muscle in the flanks and then my favorite, favorite feature in the whole styling here is the way that the tail lamp has been done. It's really sharp, it complements the slim lights up front and very much is a nice signature of the 8 series family. The boot, there's a little bit of this spoiler lip at the back, adds that sporty dynamic character that you're looking for. So on the whole, it's a car that you certainly will notice the second it comes down the street. The new 8 Series Grand Coupe certainly looks like it belongs to the luxury set and that it must given that it will take on everything from an Audi A7 and Mercedes-Benz CLS to even a Porsche Panamera. Of course, the Grand Coupe is bigger in all ways over the Coupe and convertible. So it is the Grand Coupe which means of course it's got to be bigger than the Coupe and how much bigger you ask? Well, 231 millimeters longer and 201 millimeters of that comes from a longer wheelbase itself. It's 30 millimeters wider and surprisingly 61 millimeters taller too. The taller roof means generous headroom for the rear passengers. And I have to say this optional M Sport trim looks hot. The regular trim will be the chrome line, but inherently this is a good looking car, proportionate and sensuous and a design that really comes together well. On the inside, there are many options on color and material palettes. And I can safely say that we can expect a fully loaded premium trim with that split panoramic glass roof, crafted clarity crystal finish, eye drive controller, start stop button and gear stick and much more. So the launch of the car is only going to happen in the second quarter of the next calendar year. So it's still some months away, which is why we don't have details yet in terms of what the specification of the cabin is going to be, what color palette and trim, but expect it to be fully loaded because of course this is going to be a niche offering for those select few who want something different, who want a dynamic sporty car and not just a sedan. And uh, you can expect, of course, the split sunroof to definitely feature. And it has a nice panoramic effect, gives you a better sense of space back here, which to begin with is not bad. I mean, look at the headroom you get. You look on the outside and you think, is that going to be compromised? It's not, nor is the legroom. And it is a strictly four seater configuration because you've got this huge tunnel in the middle. It gives you USB-C slots. It gives you your AC vents. And you can also control the climate control from back here for yourself. Drop down armrest goes without saying and uh, the individual seats, well, they're also sport seats because they have a nice amount of contouring, which means that if the driver chooses to go really dynamic, you don't get thrown around. You're nicely cushioned in, which is a good thing because it again maintains the sports car character. Of course, there is a three point seat belt provided for a possible middle passenger if someone does want to sit there anyway, but it won't be very comfortable. Up front, the dash has an attractive overall design. You get the virtual assistant, of course, BMW's latest iDrive 7.0 and connectivity options galore. The touchscreen and virtual cluster feature the brand's new look graphics and readings. It all looks very, very cool, to be honest, including the anti-clockwise tachometer. The company is calling this a four-door sports car, having spent a lot of time driving it on everything from smooth express highways to twisty mountain roads, I'm happy to let them make that claim. The great news is that the Grand Coupe does not feel terribly different from the two-door siblings in its driving and handling character. Now the 8 Series Grand Coupe has four different drivetrain possibilities. You've got the 840i S Drive, which is of course the two-wheel drive. Then you've got the same with the X Drive and uh, you've got the 850 where the X Drive is standard. That is of course the eight-cylinder engine and uh, 840d is the diesel in this lineup. A lot of people were surprised that there was a diesel, but uh, let me quickly tell you, it's not coming to us. So uh, while I would have liked to have driven it and uh, maybe even seen it coming to our market, it's not, so let's not waste any time on it. What do we get? Well, it is going to be the 840i S drive. So we don't get the all wheel drive system either. 
And frankly, given the kind of buyer that we have in this space and uh, the kind of usage as well that the car is going to really end up having, to me, that's actually a practical choice. Yes, India will be happy with the rear wheel drive. The inline six petrol makes 333 bhp and has 500 nm of peak torque in a generous 1600 to 4500 rpm band. This engine is 6 kgs lighter than the one that it replaces and that helps the car's agility. The motor's chief characteristic is the instant response to any slight tap on the accelerator and continued delivery of power through the higher revs. The gearbox is sublime and there is an instant response, no lag whatsoever from the engine. The gears are so quick to up or downshift that you rarely feel the need to use the paddle shifters, though they are very fun to drive with anyway. The Grand Coupe does feel like a bigger car in comparison to the Coupe or Convertible, but only just. Now, it wasn't that many days ago that I was in the same part of the world to drive the 8 Series Convertible. At the time, I remember telling you that it's the uh, chassis engineering and just the overall integrity of that chassis, the stiffness that it offers, which gives you a great drive dynamic that truly impresses, as does the steering. And of course, on the Grand Coupe, I'm happy to report, all of that has been carried through. The M suspension is standard on the 8 Grand Coupe and the 840i gets the M Sport differential too. You get the usual drive modes, of course, Eco, Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Now the engine and gearbox are extremely responsive and that's no surprise. In fact, that's something I expected coming into this, which means yes, the car is really quick and it gets up to higher speeds really quickly too. But if you also want to have that little extra sense of exhilaration to remind you that it is a sports car, put it not just in Sport, but in Sport Plus, and then the engine starts to really sing. Yes, it sounds better too than, to be honest. So the 840i will do plenty to get your juices flowing. The car is almost as taut as the two-door as I've been saying and will nip through corners with ease. It stays on line and won't flinch even a millimeter on a narrow road. The car's DSC or Dynamic Stability Control System will send the appropriate power to either the left or right rear wheel to maximize the right traction required. The car's M Sport differential doesn't only help its performance to be on point, but also helps it to maintain its composure, having a solid positive effect on the sense of control you get driving the car at higher speeds. And before you ask, there is an M8 Grand Coupe on the way, while the M8 Coupe and convertible of course, like I've said, have already been revealed. Being a luxury offering that is also sporty, is not always easy. That a car can excel in both areas is also quite remarkable. The BMW 8 Series Grand Coupe shall certainly be a welcome addition to BMW India's portfolio. It is not a car for everyone and yet is versatile enough to please many. The launch is expected between April and June next year. It may be followed up by the M8 Coupe by the end of 2020. So a bit of an 8 Series special on the show this week. Please react to it. Tell us how you like the show, how you like the fact that we've been bringing you fresh episodes every week. You know how to reach me at Sid Partenkar on Twitter. If you're going to step out for uh, getting back to work or indeed for the essentials still, please wear your masks, please wear your seat belts in your cars and stay in touch with us. Tell us how you're liking what we're doing. There's lots going on on carandbike.com as well. Please stay safe. Keep yourselves and your families absolutely safe in the current situation and take care of yourself. Bye-bye.